Completing a short triple expansion engine, this one is part 50. Removing the cylinder cladding as I'm not happy with it. Followed by temporarily fitting the cylinder drains. Some of the aspects of this engine are not right and I'm about to start the sequence to make it run properly. I think that this will take some time and could be problematic. As you can clearly see in this clip, the cladding is not good. It's really difficult to work with. It's aluminium that is anodized and it marks and bends and dents very easily. The cladding of this cylinder sort of developed. Originally I did the other side and made a really good job of it. But once I realized that the mahogany wasn't going to work out as a finished item, when I fitted the mahogany to this side, it was pointless to take too much time. That's why it's not as neatly done as on the other side. I decided to use this inner cladding not just as heat insulation, but mainly to support the very fragile outer skin. It's a bit oily because when I fitted the piping, I didn't tighten it up and it didn't seal properly. So where am I going from here? Well, the first thing to do is to refit the drain cocks. I'm not using shim washers because it doesn't matter at this stage where they are. When I fit them for real, I will use shim washers so they all line up. I originally tried silicone rubber and this worked and they sealed, but it looked terrible. I've got to the stage now where I really do need to make this engine run. But unfortunately, there are quite a few problems that don't look much until you look closer. For instance, look at the die block in the expansion link. It's square, whereas the inner part of the expansion link is round. I clearly needed to do something about this, and here I'm removing the die block, very carefully so I don't drop it on the floor. I'm now going to round the ends of this to match the expansion link, and to do this I'm using my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool, which is currently fitted with a sanding drum. I find these small sanding drums to be incredibly useful, and I have a lot of them. This is quite a coarse sanding drum, so I'm being extra careful not to grind too much of the metal away. I'm just knocking off the corners to round the end. This is the die block from the high pressure cylinder. I will do exactly the same with the other two. For the moment, I'm not refitting the die block because I need to look at the valve setting. In this clip, you can see that now that the die block end is rounded, it's less likely to foul at the end of the expansion link. The time has come to have a close look at the valve inside the steam chest. I really haven't looked at these much. Obviously, to look at the valve inside the steam chest, I need to remove the steam chest cover. You may be wondering at this stage why I'm not removing the cover. I'm actually tightening the nuts that hold it together because before doing anything, I want to see whether the valve gear can be set and whether it works or not. But mainly, I want to see whether rounding the end of the die block has made any difference, because now the expansion link can move slightly more. In this episode, I'm only going to concentrate on the high-pressure cylinder and attempt to get the engine to run just on the high-pressure cylinder. The very long and complicated process of setting these valves starts here. I'm treating this just like a single cylinder engine. I need the steam or air to be admitted just before top dead centre and bottom dead centre exactly the same amount. Not dead on top and bottom dead centre, just before. This video is quite heavily edited and to arrive at this situation, very fine tweaking, took quite a while. Unfortunately, the eccentric sheaves are made as a pair, which in one sense is good because I've only got one adjustment, but quite frankly, I hate it when it's like this because there's always some sort of a compromise. The problem is, these two eccentrics made as one unit are not 180 degrees to each other. They're set slightly out to allow for the lead, which makes it so that the air or steam is admitted before the piston reaches top dead centre. Personally, over the years, I have had limited success with this method. I much prefer it to have separate eccentrics that can be adjusted individually. Eventually, I got one side right.
Not very smooth, I know, but do bear in mind this is the high-pressure cylinder dragging two other cylinders with the associated valve gear. At this stage, I have some good news and some bad news. With the engine running, as you've just seen, the eccentric setting relative to the crank pin was at about 90 degrees. Unfortunately, though, when I wind the reversing handle and move the expansion link to the other end, the timing is not right at all and the engine will not run in the other direction. If I adjust the position of the eccentric sheath to suit this direction of running, then yes, it does go in reverse, but then it won't go forward. For the high pressure and low pressure cylinders, I'm definitely going to make some eccentric sheaves that are individually adjustable. I'm also concerned that the valve is blowing, so I'm going to have a look at it. Here is the high pressure cylinder slide valve and as you can see it's quite badly marked in places. The marks are mainly on the outside edges so I think it's time to flatten it off a bit. I put some 3-in-1 oil on some 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper and mainly using a circular motion I cleaned up the face of the valve. Occasionally I used a figure of 8 motion because a viewer once told me to do that but I don't see the point. The valve only goes up and down, so it's just as good to do it this way. Here I'm using some 600 grade wet or dry sandpaper and I'm moving the valve side to side. The rest of the cleanup will be carried out as the valve moves up and down over the ports. I do not like the look of these shiny marks on the port face at each side. This could mean that the port face isn't flat. But all I have to do is remove the studs and then flatten the port face manually. What I'm doing here, just as a quick test, is moving the slide valve up and down to see whether any new marks reappear on the valve. I'm not going to take it that far for the moment though. I'm going to put the engine back together and see if it runs. If it does run and I don't detect the blowing sound as before, then all is well. The valve is not bad, it uncovers the ports more or less equidistantly. And by adjusting the eccentric sheave, I can get the valve timing right, but only in one direction. That's why I'm definitely going to make separate eccentric sheaves. I've refitted the die block into the valve fork and the expansion link, and that's working fine. That's about it for this episode, and I'm not going to be making eccentric sheaves Instead, I'm going to have a play with it and see whether I can get these eccentric sheaves that are made in pairs to do what they're supposed to do, but I doubt it. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.